So what I'd like to do here is reach back to some of the things we learned in intro statistics and try and tie them into, well, I guess, where we started and where we are now and where we're going with things. So to try and tie together some ideas. So <clears throat> at the very beginning of an intro stats course, you learn things like type of variables. Right? So x variable can be numeric or categorical. So suppose x is numeric, it's systolic blood pressure. And then we learn that we can summarize numeric variables with means and I guess and standard deviations, right? To describe kind of a center, a typical value, and on average how far things move from that mean. Then you tend to move into a normal distribution. Let's correct that. You move into talking about normal distribution. And this is the kind of theoretical, or what I often refer to as pretend world. So you do things like this. You say, suppose that you know, right? So this is the theoretical or pretend world. Suppose you know that X being the systolic blood pressure follows a normal distribution with a particular mean and variance, right? Or that it has a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Right? So you know the true mean and the true standard deviation of the systolic blood pressure for a certain population. And then you learn to answer questions like, what's the probability that x, the systolic blood pressure, is greater or equal to some value? So what's the probability x is greater or equal to little x? Say, well, here's the mean. Here's the little x. What's the probability of someone's blood pressure being greater or equal to that value? To do that, you standardize, and you work through all these calculations, right? And they're always under saying, suppose we knew the truth. Then, I'm gonna say then, this is still in the kind of intro stats umbrella. After you build this theory where if we know the truth, how do samples behave? you move into acknowledging that you don't know the mean. Right? You must estimate it. Right? So you acknowledge, well, we don't actually know the mean systolic blood pressure for a population, but we've got to take a sample and try and estimate that. And then you'd say, well, we can estimate it with a sample mean. So collect a sample of data, calculate the sample mean. And then you say, well, this is just an estimate. We might be over or underestimating the true value a bit. And you learn about tacking on a margin of error to that. Right, this here being the standard error of the sample mean. Right. So you learn to say, well, we don't know the mean. We have to estimate it. Here are some ways we can collect data. We can get an estimate, tack on a margin of error. We're pretty confident the true population mean is in here somewhere. Right. And then, where we're going now, so now what we're starting to acknowledge is that the mean, aside from being able to have ways of estimating it, depends on other things. Right. So, for example, here we're talking about the mean systolic blood pressure. And right, <clears throat> we don't want to just say, well, here's the mean blood pressure for a certain population, because it may actually change depending on age. Right? If people are older, their systolic blood pressure might be higher. Or um, biological sex. Right? Male systolic blood pressure is higher than females. So if we want to talk about the mean blood pressure, we might need to separate, are we talking about a male or a female? We're talking about someone who's older or someone who's younger. Does the individual smoke or not? Or other lifestyle habits, right? There's other variables that are gonna affect that mean. Right? So then what we move into is linear regression. Okay. And this is where we learn to estimate the mean as a function of x variables. So you learn, the mean of y given x 
I mean, so here in our example, say the mean systolic blood pressure, B0 plus B1, let's say H, plus B2 times sex, and so on. All right, so now we learn to say, well, given the person's age, biological sex, what other variables, whatever other variables we might think are important, what do we estimate the mean would be for people of those characteristics? And from this linear regression model, recall we also get this residual standard error, which we can think of sort of as being the average error. Right? On average, how far are people getting from that regression line? Right? Or what's the kind of average deviation? And now where we can go with this is, right, <clears throat> rather than saying, well, we know that blood pressures are normal, we know the mean, we know the standard deviation, we would say, well, we don't know those, we can estimate them, but they probably depend on other things. We can use linear regression to estimate the mean. Right? So say, given someone's age, their sex, and so on, here's what we estimate their mean should be. We also know people are going to vary from that mean. From the regression model, we can get residual standard error, which we can use to get at this. Right? What's the kind of average error, or how far do people move from the mean? So I want to spend a moment talking about this to try and close that loop, because I want to go back to why do we spend time in this pretend world saying, suppose we knew the true values. We don't, but now we're learning how we can estimate these things as a function of other variables, and then we can still make use of that theory, right? If we knew that blood pressures were approximately normally distributed, we can estimate their mean and standard deviation, and we can work with all that normal theory that we learned and built up earlier. So next what I want to do is build a connection between linear regression and the two-sample t-test. Right? We previously talked about two-sample t-test and its use. We're going to acknowledge some of the limitations of that, but what I want to show you is in certain circumstances, some of these coefficients can be thought of as giving us a difference in means or what the two-sample t-test would give us, but adjusting that for other variables. So what I want to show you is how we can take all these different things we learned in an intro stats course and we can start to build on them and, and make them a little bit more complex, acknowledge some of the realities of the world, and then try and address those through regression model. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.